Ben. Hello, 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 hello. Well, God love you. Well, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Caitlin, thank you for the introduction. And more importantly, Well, thank you for that introduction and for your courage, if you're back there, your courage to, and to, to share your story. That's not an easy thing to do. You know, Caitlin represents millions of women who are enduring unbearable pain and cruelty because of Donald Trump. Sadly, it's pain and cruelty that millions of women in Florida now face. You know, but as I said, as she just said, it's not inevitable. It's not inevitable. We can stop it. When you vote, we can stop it. And thanks to Representative Kathy Castor. Kathy, where, there she is. Stand up, Kathy. Kathy's doing an incredible job in Congress and, uh, I, and is a great, great friend. And thanks for riding over with me from the airport. You know, the worst sentence in English language these days is the president's at the airport means you got to show up, you know? <laughs> But anyway, thank you. And I want to thank Debbie, our next U.S. Senator. Deb, stand up. As one, as one senior senator years ago when I was a freshman running for re-election in the United States Senate said to me, he said, I'll campaign for you or against you, whoever helped the most. <laughs> but it's really important you win. This is a critical, critical race. Debbie's running against Rick Scott, who wants to sunset Social Security. I think the voters are going to sunset Rick Scott. It's important, man. And thanks to all of you here today, it's good to be at a community college. Matter of fact, my wife's been campaigning all over the country in between classes. My wife still is a full-time professor. At at Northern Virginia Community College. You lost your phone. Get that man his phone. He's going to be in trouble. That woman her phone. She's teaching this very day, Jill is. Community College, as she often says, is one of the best kept secrets in America. You know, I really mean it. You know, if I have my way in the next four years, I'm going to make Community College free. And it'll grow the economy. It won't cost the taxpayers. Look, next week, one of the nation's most extreme anti-abortion law will take effect here in Florida. It's criminalizing reproductive health care before women even know whether they're pregnant. I mean, this is bizarre. I can put, you can put a doctor in prison if she takes care of a patient, as you just heard some version of from Louisiana. You know, this extreme Florida law is going to impact 4 million, 4 million women in the state of Florida. Florida is one of the 20 front one states in America where America, you can't get access you need for care. This adds up to one in three women throughout the United States of America have this limitation. For 50 years, the court ruled that there was a fundamental constitutional right to privacy. But two years ago, that was taken away. Let's be real clear. There's one person responsible for this nightmare, and he's acknowledged and he brags about it, Donald Trump. In fact, Trump's bragged about it overturning Roe v. Wade, which meant there's no federal right. No decision can be made. All those decisions are made at the state level. A lot of people don't even know that. They don't focus on it. So every state can make a decision. Well, you know, now Trump says the law is, quote, working the way it's supposed to. Trump goes on to say individual state laws are working, his words, brilliantly. Brilliantly. It's a six-week ban in Florida. It's really brilliant, isn't it? Even before women know they're pregnant. Is that brilliant? Well, just take a look at Arizona. It goes all the way back to 1864, before Arizona was even a state, before women had the right to vote, concluding that that's the law of the land in Arizona. And today, MAGA Republicans refuse to re re repeal that ban in, in Arizona. 
Trump is literally taking us back 160 years. He says it's up to the states, and this is all about state rights. But he's wrong. The Supreme Court was wrong. It should be a constitutional right in the federal constitution, a federal right. And it shouldn't matter where in America you live. It's about, this isn't about state rights, it's about women's rights. Well, I, I mean this. I, look, folks, look. Now he's worried the voters will hold him accountable for saying he's responsible for getting Roe v. Wade overturned. <laughs> Donald Trump is worried voters are going to hold him accountable for the cruelty and chaos he created. Folks, the bad news for Trump is we are going to hold him accountable. We, we are. He should be held accountable. He should be accountable for states enacting extreme laws that put IVF treatments at risk for women desperately trying to have families. Voters are going to hold Trump accountable for women being turned away from emergency rooms like my introducer was. Forced to travel hundreds of miles to get basic health care. Forced to go to court to plead for help to protect herself and her ability to have children in the future. Folks, Voters are going to hold Trump accountable. When, when women are told by extreme politicians and judges to wait, get sicker and sicker to the point where your life is determined and be in danger. Pregnant women in America are risk, at risk, particularly black women in America. No, th that's the statistic. Data shows they're already too likely to die from complications at birth. I believe voters are going to hold Trump accountable when family members and doctors are threatened with prosecution for trying to help them. Not only that, I believe voters are going to hold Trump accountable and his MAGA's extremist friends to prevent all women in America from getting safe and effective medication like methylprestone, approved by the FDA 20 years ago. They're trying to outlaw that now. For 50 years, the court had recognized that women in America had a fundamental constitutional right, and then Trump took it away by the, way, the deal he made. Now in America today, in 2024, women have fewer rights than their mothers and their grandmothers had because of Donald Trump. Look, I don't think we're going to let them get away with it, do you? No! And folks, in a sense, I don't know why he's, we're surprised by Trump. How many times does he have to prove we can't be trusted? Trump bragged how proud he was to get rid of Roe v. Wade over. He took credit for it. He said, there has to be punishment for women exercising their reproductive freedom. His words, not mine. He described the Dobbs decision as a miracle. Maybe it's coming from that Bible he's trying to sell. Whoa. I almost wanted to buy one just to see what the hell's in it. Folks, it was no miracle. It was a political deal to get rid of Roe v. A deal, a political deal he made with the evangelical base of the Republican Party to look past his moral, if they look past his moral and character flaws in exchange for his commitment to appoint justice to the Supreme Court who would overturn Roe. Don't think he's making a deal right now with MAGA extremists to ban nationwide abortion in every single state because he's making it. In fact, the MAGA majority in the House of Representatives has introduced three separate bans, three separate bans to, cho to ban choice nationwide in every single state, based on the state, each state. These bills are overwhelming, have overwhelming support in Republicans in Congress. But know this, as long as I have the power of the presidency, it's never going to happen. I mean, Congress ever, if Congress ever passes a ban, I will veto that ban. <laughs> Elected Democratic Congress, Kamala and I will make Roe v. Wade the law of the land again. <laughs> Let's be clear. The overturning of Roe v. Wade also puts at risk broader rights of privacy for everyone. If you think I'm exaggerating, here's what Justice Thomas wrote in current, concurring opinion in Roe v. Wade. He wrote that the future cases of the court should reconsider, reconsider all substantive due process precedents from Griswold. Griswold legalized the use of contraception. O o and Ogerfeld legalized same-sex marriage. Justice Thomas means it. 
and so does Donald Trump. Again, here's what that means. The right to make the best decisions for your health, the right to use birth control, the right to marry the person you love. All that's at risk now because it's no longer viewed by some of our good friends in the court as a constitutional guaranteed right. Are we going to let that happen? No! Nobody, no! <laughs> I like it, man. Will you come with me? <laughs> Folks, the extreme laws passed since overturning Roe Re v. Wade have no place in the United States of America. But what does have a place in America is your voice. Yeah. This decision overturning Roe v. Wade and saying states should make the decisions of the court practically dared women, practically dared women to be heard. Here's what they wrote in that decision. Women are not without electoral or political power. No kidding. No kidding. I'm mean, almost challenging you. I said at the time, I don't think the court or the MAGA Republicans have a clue about the power of women in America. I, re I mean it. I mean it. But they're beginning to find out since the Dobbs decision, which states said should make these decisions, the court said that the states should make decisions, states all over this country, from Ohio, Kansas, Michigan, Kentucky, Wisconsin, Virginia, women and men in every background voted to record numbers to protect, in record numbers, to protect reproductive freedom. Yeah, yeah. This November, you can add Florida to that list. Okay. Are you ready to do that? You got to show up and vote. Are you ready to protect freedom? It was Donald Trump who ripped away the rights of freedom of women in America. It'll be all of us who restore those rights for women in America. Yeah. <laughs> and when you do that, we'll teach Donald Trump and the extreme MAGA Republicans a valuable lesson. Yeah. Don't mess with the women of America. Yeah. I mean it. <laughs> Folks, let's get this done. Go to JoeBiden.com, sign up, get involved. I know you all in this room are involved. Talk to your family and friends. Organize your community. Register voters. Get them out to vote. Old-fashioned way. Pick them up on the next day. Call. Do you need a ride to the polls? And let's remember who we are. We're the United States of America. And there's nothing, nothing beyond our capacity if we work together. May God bless you all. May God protect our troops. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you.